everyone. Welcome back to Lovely Lavender Wishes. It's Renee and I hope you're having a very blessed day. So today we are continuing on with our uh, Under the Sea album. Um, I inked the inside edges. You're, you're probably not going to see hardly any of it, but just in case a little bit of it sticks out, I inked it up. Um, that's about the only thing I did with that. So the other thing I did that we're going to start today is I started making a couple tags. I still need to spray this with some fixative. Um, I'm letting it dry, but uh, it's like a multi-step process. I don't know if y'all can see. It's got like glitter and I used some crackle accents and then I heated it up until it bubbled. Um, I don't know if you can see that y'all. I heated it up till it bubbled. Um, we've got, uh, oh, what is this? Cheesecloth or it's like a little mesh. Um, we put this on the tag um, and then I put some extra cheesecloth down here. Um, Let's see, some crackle effect down here. I also patinaed it and antiqued it and put some silver and copper on it. Same as up here. Um, I do have some mist. So if you can see it in the light, it shimmers, there we go. It shimmers and shines, depending on how it turns. Um, also have some on the paper here, which is inked up. I've got this uh, 3D little sticker. Um, I have a shell that is patinaed up as well, and then the back journaling um, with some sorry silk on top. So today we are going to start this. I'll show you how I did it. Um, I'm going to do uh, the front page. So I measured this page. This is going to be in the front here um, of this journal. So as you see the inking, you'll probably won't see much, but just a little tad will stick out, but it'll look perfect. Um, I'm not going to stick it in yet because I need to do my, uh, floating spine here once I get my signatures in. So that will get glued in here. This will get glued on top. So you won't see any of the tape. That's the other thing I did is I reinforced the, the spine here. Um, so we're going to work on the cover inside cover parts. It's going to be decorative, kind of like this. We're going to do it in the same type of form, um, but I have a bunch of these stickers. Um, they're like little 3D stickers, and if you can see, they have a shimmer and shine to them as well. So I've got a few of these that we're going to make like a little um, under the sea scene, um, and then I'm going to make another tag. So let's sit down and let me get going on this. I'll show you how I started it. Okay, the first thing you want to do, which I didn't do the first time, is back back it, um, back your, whatever this is, <laughs> your tag first. I'm not going to back this because it's going to go in the hard cover. But for the tag, you definitely want to get this on first because I had all these overhanging little pieces that I did not want to cut off. So it was really hard trying to cut around those pieces. So I learned the first time. So learn from my mistakes and don't do what I did. <laughs> so we're going to back this and get glue everywhere. So it's going to stick really well. Oh, y'all, my nose is running. Sorry, y'all. Uh, and I'll show you my signature papers that I did as well. And then I also started on my um, piece for the back part. And so I'll show you just the, the initial base and how to make that as well. So hopefully we can get to all of that today within the hour. I like to try to keep my videos under an hour if possible. Okay, I'm just making sure I got it all here. Okay, so I backed it with um, some like kind of heavy duty cardstock. This is just some cardstock I had from one of my paper pads. I'm gonna punch the hole. There we go. Let's move that. Okay. We got that, yay. Okay, so the first thing I did, let me remember. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, the first thing I did, so I got some Mod Podge off, and I just, I grabbed this one. It's antique matte. Since it's going to be antique -y, it didn't really matter to me. Um, I grabbed, this is some really cheap cheesecloth that really frays um, a lot versus, let's see, you can see the difference. Like, I bought this cheesecloth off Amazon. See that cheesecloth versus this cheesecloth. See the difference in that? So depending on the look you want, I want a net look, so I'm gonna use this cheesecloth versus this cheesecloth. This is great for behind ephemera pieces. I like using this one for that. I like this for like more netting or like if I wanna like tear it apart and make like bird's nest type stuff. So I guess not all cheesecloth is made the same, y'all. I learned that when I ordered some. I didn't even look at like what type of cheesecloth it was. I just kind of ordered it. And um, that's what came to me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just cut a chunk of this off. Doesn't have to be all perfect because it's not going to be. And then I'm gonna kind of like just bunch it up and try to figure out exactly like how I want it to go on. Let's do it like this. I want it to kind of like swoop over all over my tag, kind of like this. So let's put that there for an example. Okay, y'all not like giving me the look that I want so I have to just keep playing with it I just keep fiddling y'all I just fiddle 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 hmm again it's not I think last time I just grabbed okay let's try this again we'll use that for something else <laughs> I think I left it double last time that gave me that better look so let's try that. There we go. Yeah. So I kept it like doubled up. See if I pull this apart, there's like another layer on that. And I just kind of miss. Okay. So this is kind of how I want it. So the first thing you're going to do is grab a brush, grab your Mod Podge, and I'll, I just swirled it on my paper. Or if you don't have Mod Podge, you can use gesso, you can use glue, um, whatever you have, anything that's gonna stick. I just had this, so I grabbed it. And then make sure you got it everywhere. And then just start, this down. Just start uh, putting your cheesecloth, however you want it. Your netting. I'm gonna have it like do like a little swoopy swoop and. Didn't even have to go over that far, actually. I mean, let's go stick it down like that. I want to kind of swoop. Okay, then you are going to trim it a tad. And it won't look all, once you get done with it, it'll start looking really frayed, which is what you want. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna do is go back over it. You want to like really get it on there.
and this is why it's a, a multiple parts um, process because this is gonna have to dry probably overnight. This one I had to dry overnight and actually I had to dry it even more because I put so much on there. Maybe you don't need to put this much on. I'm just clumping it up because it's easier to get it in all the little crevices and holes and such. So when this dries, then you're, what you're gonna do is paint over the whole thing with black. So I might do that before our next video because that then that takes a while to dry. So um, let this dry. Once this is dry and hardened, go in. I just went in with black acrylic paint and painted over the whole thing with black. and then let that dry. That's gotta be completely dry as well before we can go in and start spraying and all that. So I might, I'll might i do that before the next video as well. Let this dry, I'll paint it black, and then we'll all come together and I'll show you the rest of the steps. I'm gonna put some on these little ones sticking out because I want those to get hard as well. Do that little corner because it just okay. I'm gonna put that in water so that's got to dry. In the meantime, what else I do is I take my crackle accents and then I put some along the sides and just kind of squiggle it on. It really doesn't matter. If you don't have crackle accents, maybe if you have like a, um, oh, what is that one? Glossy accents, you can do that. If you don't have that, you can even do like a clear glue. You just want it kind of like, it to be like this antique crusty little like kind of look. You know, kind of hanging, bubbling off, off the page. This will dry. And then what I did, like I said, I went on it with my heat tool to the point where it started to bubble up and actually made like little bubbles in. You can't, it's hard to see on camera, but you can see it close up. So it looks like the, it looks like it's um, like rusted metal once we get all the patina and the spray and the antiquing on it. But these little bubbled and then you got the little cracks as well so it looks like this aged metal which I think is cool um, let's see do I want it in any other places let me put some up here I'm just gonna put it across the whole top and kind of hanging hanging down like that so let me show you how about that looks like up close so you can see it so you can see that's where I put it and I had it like just kind of dripping down here's the corner and I even went into the um, whatever this is the cheesecloth oh my gosh y'all the cheesecloth with that okay so this has to sit overnight and dry um, and like I said once it's dry I'm gonna paint over all this part with black okay so let me move that to the side. I also want to do, oh, let's move that. So it's gonna look like this when we're done. I also want to do this page um, and I wanna do, so I'm gonna do this, we'll do this together as well, but this is gonna be the inside cover of the book and I want it kind of coming down again and we're gonna do like a little underwater scene. But I love the like little shimmer and the, Okay, that should be good. So same process, Ooh, same process, come on. Okay, so let's go back to the Mod Podge. I should have just done this all at the same time. And I am literally just gonna slop it on here. 
Looks like I got a hair. <laughs> Y'all, my hair gets everywhere. Oh my gosh, I have been having so much fun doing this journal. I just It's just like a change of pace. You know, I love every journal I love doing. It's just, um, I, I just got to get in, in the mode of it. You know what I mean? Like when I was doing my corset journal, I got all corsety, you know, my, my corset mode. Then my Renaissance journal and my Gothic journals. And now I'm just like all about under the sea. So I love doing like totally different journals because then it's, it's always different for me and it's never the same. Which I love because I cannot stand doing the same thing over and over and over again. And like I told you all before, my journals will never ever look the same. I am going to wipe some of this off because I didn't need that. Just like cut. I want frayed edges. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's. how I want it. Oh, you little pieces. Okay. So get it down on the bottom, squish it all down. A big old clump like that. Okay, and then just go back over it and then this will dry as well. And then again, paint over it with black. So if you want to do an inside cover like this, you can decoupage napkins on this. I was thinking of doing that. Um, I'm going to do this first um, and see how it looks. And I might do some like coral decoupaging. Um, you, could, you could decoupage first and then put this over. That might be smarter. I don't, I don't know. Let me see. If I have some napkins that I want to use, I wonder if I have like some big coral pieces. That would be cute. Might as well decoupage now. Okay, I gotta get this napkin, all the plies off this napkin. It's pretty together here. Make sure I don't tear it. And as I say that, watch. <laughs> over move these over Ooh. let me think okay 
Okay, I'm gonna grab some water. I'm gonna tear this one out. I'm going to tear I don't know if that'll fit, but let's see. This is all about a fly, the seat of my plant pants, y'all. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing here, but we'll see if it works. It's usually how I craft, by the seat of my pants. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Okay, so let's see here. That might be a little too big. We can maybe get one of them in. Um, definitely get this guy in. Oops, let's grab this brush since I already have it going. Am I in camera, y'all? I hope I'm in camera for y'all. Yeah, decoupage probably first would be my suggestion. I didn't decoupage on my tags, um, but if you're gonna decoupage, it'd probably make it easier. I should have probably, let me get rid of that. I should have decoupaged this behind this. I wonder, I wonder if it would go on top. I've never tried that before. Should we try it? And see, but then I still need to spray this. Uh, let me think. I could try decoupaging it after I paint over it with black. I might decoupage this on the top. We might try that. So I'm gonna save this to the side and we'll, we'll see how that looks. I have to paint over this with black and then I'll decoupage this over it. I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but we can try. We can try and see. If not, I can just take it off. Okay, so let's finish this. You really gotta kinda get it in the little grooves and such. So I'm kinda like dabbing it on. You wanna get it all in there. Make sure it's sealed. And then, because when we spray it, we're gonna be spraying a lot of stuff over the top. So you might wanna grab um, your, let's see, what did I use? I think I used Dilutions spray, blues and greens. I also used some of my mica powder sprays for the shiny parts. And then grab some of your uh, um, oh, antique stuff, like your patinas and uh, texture paste or gilding paste anything that you have if you have if you don't have anything you can do like silver paint copper paint a spray a mica spray just go creative with what you have I always see people do stuff and I'm like oh I don't have that but how can I get that same look with what I do have And I think that is even more fun than just having all the equipment, all the stuff. Um, 
I find more fun trying to jerry rig, I guess I could say jerry rig, um, my crafts and try to figure out how to get that same look with like a totally different product um, using the products that I have, whether it's in Bible journaling or junk journaling or whatever. I enjoy that. It, it kind of keeps me creative and I have to figure out how can I, how can I get, you know, do the same thing, but using only these products. So if you don't have cheesecloth, maybe use string and just bunch up a bunch of string or thread. If you don't have Mod Podge, use glue. Use um, gesso. Okay, now I'm just gonna kinda go around and get these little ends a little bit. Yeah, if I didn't have cheesecloth, I would just bunch up a bunch of string or find something with kind of netting that, like a netting look, like a scarf or something that's got holes in it and just pull it apart, put it on here. Cause you're gonna paint the whole thing black anyways. So it's not even gonna matter what color it is. So it could be purple, it could be yellow. You're gonna paint over it. Put those guys there. Okay, ooh, this is gonna look, this is gonna be fun. Okay, let me move all this. Shake all that out. Okay, put that in the water. Okay, so now again, this, grab it, and my tag are both going to dry overnight. We're gonna let those two dry. You can barely see that, but we'll see how that looks when it's dry, and then we'll see how we if we can put that on top once I paint this black and maybe spray it, and we'll put that on top. We'll see. Um, do I want to put some crackle on here? Yeah, might as well have it kind of dripping down a little from the top. Make it look all, I don't know. coming from the side too. Dripping down. I don't know what it's supposed to represent, but it'll just represent, I don't know, water bubbles or something. <laughs> the deep sea. Things in the deep sea. I just like having that dimension. Okay, so we'll let that dry as well. I gotta put some in that corner. It's driving me crazy. The corner's calling. Okay, so let's see if you can see that. Can you all see? That's where I put it up at the top and I had it kind of dripping down. And there's the side. Here's my decoupage napkin. We'll see once it dries, it might probably just blend right into the black. We'll see. But I know it's there. It might just, just barely peek out in the deep, deep sea. It'll eventually turn blue. It won't be black, because as you can see, we'll have the shimmer and the blues and stuff. I mean, it will be dark, but um, it'll, it'll pop out once we get all the layers on. So, okay. So there we go with that. So let's me, let me move this to side. So we got to let that dry. That'll be our next project. The next time we'll finish that. Okay. So let me move all this. Okay. The other thing, what is the other thing? Okay. Let me show you my signatures, what I did. Okay. So I have two signatures. Look at this, y'all. Look at the paper. It is so cool. It turned out so much better than I thought. And all I did was spray, but I did it in layers. Okay, so here was that mesh, and I cut it 
kind of like wavy forms. What I did is I tore all the paper first. So if you wanna do this, what you wanna do is measure your paper to make sure that it's going to fit into, you know, your book, whatever size book you're gonna make. So make sure it's gonna fit in there. Um, cut it all and then tear waves. And each page you want different. So I tore, I had a hand tear every page um, just into wave forms. So then you get this look with your pages. Can you all see that? You get all the different waveforms, okay? Um, this was that mesh, I just cut that into waves. So I have one for each signature, okay? And then, let's see. So here are some of the looks I got. So how I did this is before you fold your paper, keep it all flat. Um, and I just grabbed a whole bunch of white copy paper. This is a little bit thicker than normal copy paper. Um, let me see here. I've got two kinds of copy pa paper here. So here, this one, and I don't have the package, so I don't know, but you can kind of, you can even see the light coming through this copy paper. It's super thin. This is the copy paper I use when I just need to print stuff out, you know, that don't really, doesn't really mean anything. I just need to print something. Now I have this copy paper and it's a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can, you can hear it, but you can feel it. It's just a tad thicker. It's not card stock, but it's a little bit thicker than the regular copy paper. Um, so that is what I used for this. Okay. Um, that way the ink did not like totally soak through. I used um, the Dilutions spray. Um, I used aqua and blue. Um, let's see, you can see that aqua and blue. I also used my, dis okay, so the first thing I did is I went through with my distressed, uh, Tim Holtz distress stinks. And I did like the smooshing technique, y'all know, like I put it on glass, I sprayed it with water, and then I took my paper and I just kind of dipped my paper in. That way you're getting these really light backgrounds. Can y'all see? Just the really light, like smooshing technique. Y'all have seen me do the smooshing technique before. Okay, so that was the first layer. Second layer, so I let that dry. Second layer, um, and some of them I let dry, some while they were still damp, I, I did the second part on. Then I did coffee, a coffee spray. Um, and I have all my stuff in the other room. It's all in the kitchen. Um, so my coffee spray is in like a little, uh, like a little sprayer, just about this big. I put instant coffee in, grounds, like maybe a tablespoon of instant coffee grounds in with some water. I shake it up, I let it, you know, I'll get all mixed and then I use my sprayer. And I get some really great effects. You can see, I don't know if you, my camera's trying to, there we go. You can see it looks like sand. Like I get these little pebble effects. Now depending on how big of drips, you can see how big big of the drips. I have a spray bottle that I can do bigger drips or light or you know a mist. Um, here's some bigger drips. So I did a variety of the coffee throughout. And then on some pages, not all pages, but some pages, I did my dilutions, uh, the you know really intense spray. Um, and then some of them I just sprayed like that, so I would have spots like that and then other ones I would spray and then um, put water use my spray bottle water and have them drip down so you get a variety of looks here and when you when you drip it into if you hold your paper so it'll all settle into the waves you get some really cool intense looks along the edges see this and I didn't have to ink those up which is all the ink settled into those torn edges which look really really cool so it was a smooshing technique spray bottle of uh, coffee dye and then some of my delusions oh and then I don't know if you can see here can you see the shimmer and shine right there then I went in so I actually it was a four-step process I went in with my mica powder spray I made some sprays and I sprayed some 
aqua, blue, and silver. In some areas, I just um, dripped it. Like I just took my, I took it out of the spray bottle and just dripped it onto the paper. So here you can see, well actually this is a vellum piece of paper. So I did a lot of the mica spray on the vellum as well. You can see that. So let me, I'm trying to find some. This is just spray splatter. I wanted it to look like sand at the bottom of the ocean. I wanted some to look like waves. So when you spray your paper, and if you put your paper like this on top of each other and then spray it, you'll get the wave looks um, on your pages as well. So I did that on a few pages. Also, while my pages were wet, what I did is I stacked them up all flat on top of each other so that some of the color was soaking into the other pages as well. Um, so then you get some really neat looks like that. Here's another of the wave. You can see the waves. So I tried to do that. So this afternoon what I'm going to do is go through and sew some waves with thread on a few of these pages. Not all of them, but like maybe a third of the pages. So this kind of gives you an idea. You can see the, the mica powder spray. Um, some pages I wanted to look more like sand. Other pages I wanted to look like you were like deeper in the ocean. And then I got some really cool effects like this when I was putting pages on top of each other. And again, you can see the mica on some of these. So you get this glitter and glisten. It's kind of like, I don't know, kind of like you're in this other world, which I love. I love the ocean. And then like here, I did more intense colors. So I did some light pages, some dark pages. I wanted that, just that really different feel. So that's what I did for that. So this afternoon, what I'll do, um, or the next couple days is I will be sewing um, the waves on some of these, okay? So that's if you wanna do the signature. So I, I did two signatures. I don't know how many pages. I just grabbed a bunch of paper, probably like maybe, I don't know, 15 or so pages per, maybe more, 15 to 20 pages per signature. And then we're gonna decorate this up. Okay, so the other thing I have to show you for those of you who want to start crafting along, Okay, here's the book that's going to go into our Under the Water Journal. Um, inside the book, so this will go in like this, in the book, like this. So this will get attached to the back cover here. This will flip open. Inside, we're gonna have a whole other, kind of like our nature journal, we're gonna have a file folder journal. And I'm probably gonna have it magnetized so it'll like be magnetized and, and stick to that back piece. So when this is closed and this, it'll, it'll stay, it won't like slip out. So we're gonna do that magnetized. So it's kind of like you're opening your treasure chest and we're gonna decorate this. I have a couple ideas on how we're gonna decorate this book. I think it's gonna go like this, this way. So I have an idea of how we're going to decorate. It's going to, that's going to be fun. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Okay. So let me show you how I put this together for those who want to craft along. Okay. So like I told y'all before, um, I like to at least get the base going. Um, and I don't attach anything yet because sometimes I want to add different things. I change my mind or I wanna sew different things, and it's easier to sew when I have it in sections, okay? So this, like I said, is going to fit in that little book. This is going to be the cover. So if you want to do this, this is how I did it, okay? Let me take all this out, okay? The first thing I did, let me see, oh my gosh, y'all. I don't know the first thing I did. Okay, first thing I did was this, this piece, okay? So all I did was cut my file folders in half. Like I opened them up and cut my file folders. So I had one sheet, okay? This was one file folder right here, okay? Or one side of a file folder. This is my long file folder that I had. I'm trying to find here. Okay, so I had a file folder like this, right? Here's the file folder. All I did was cut it down the middle. Cut it down the middle, right here. 
So then you have this long piece, right? See this long piece? Right here. So with that piece, I just try to figure out how big I need in my cover. So I just measured, I wanted this to fit inside this. So however big your book is, that is going to be the width of your cover, your main piece. And then your, your whole book is going to go off this width, whatever width book that you're using. I made it a, probably a tad smaller than this. I didn't go all the way to the edges because I want to be able to put ephemera pieces and um, jewels and stuff sticking out. So I probably gave myself maybe a quarter an inch leeway, extra room. So I didn't make this as wide as this, if that makes sense, okay? So then, so this piece, gosh y'all, is my cover. Let me do that. So really all I did was just take pieces of file folders and put them all together. So let me show you. I don't know. Uh, this is, it's hard to explain. As we craft, it'll be so much easier for you all to see. Okay. And then I just attach everything with, um, oh my gosh, y'all, with uh, paper clips. Okay. So my first file, my first file folder was this. So I made the spine, again, just a tad smaller than this spine because I wanted room to expand. So I made it just a tad, maybe, you know, a fourth of an inch smaller than the spine that you're using. So you want it just a little bit smaller. You don't want it jamming into the spine, okay? That makes sense. So I made my spine. So that was all my first. So this was my first file folder here. Oh my gosh, y'all. I've got so many things. Okay, so my second file folder My second half of that file folder, what I did, here's the, my second half of the file folder, right here. All I did here was, again, just measure it with this one now. So here's my main folder. I wanted a pocket here, a top pocket, top pocket here. And I want this to be a pocket here. So I, I measured, not even measured, I just put my file folder here and I put tick marks where this one was already folded. So that's gonna go right in those folds. Again, tick marks where the um, spine is. So this is gonna enforce the spine. So I got an enforced spine. So this is my third file folder, or my second, my second file folder, sorry y'all. First file folder was these three sections, just ignore this right now, these three sections. I gotta leave this all here because I'm not, I'm not gonna remember how it all went. My second file folder, same piece, the other flap, and I just measured it this way. So now this one's gonna be longer than this one which is gonna give me a pocket here. This is gonna give me a pocket here. This is gonna enforce the spine. So once I start, I'm gonna have a top loading pocket here and a pocket here. So all I did was really just take um, file folders and just start piecing them together. Okay, so that's the second one. I forgot where my, okay. So on this one, I took an extra piece of file folder, had a flap. This is going to go here. And again, we'll do this as we're going, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I put these together. I know it probably makes no sense whatsoever right now. I promise you it will. <laughs> okay. 
So this is going to be a flip down. So this is gonna get glued under here and it's gonna be a flip down. But again, like I said, I keep all the pieces separate because I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna, you know, sew pieces of paper to it, pockets, things like that. Okay, so that's gonna be the flip down. Okay, what else? Okay, so this one is the back cover. Okay, so this one is gonna be the back cover. That's the cover. This is gonna be the back cover. So this file folder, this is where the magnet's going to go. Okay, so this was a small file folder. So I just measured it. So this would cover this whole thing. It's gonna flip open like this and I had this little um, tab left over. So on that tab, I am going to put this piece. This is another file folder piece I had. This is going to be three pockets. So I just folded over a piece of file folder that I had. I wanted this side a little bit longer. This is going to get glued to this or sewn to it, whatever I decide. And it's going to be like an accordion. And so this will fold like this. This will be three pockets. This will come out. And so we'll have this side to do something on, this side to do something on. This is going to be the back cover, which will have the magnet in it. And here we are with the front cover here. So you figure out where your back cover is, where your front cover is. Okay, is that making sense, I hope? Oh, I hope so. Okay, now this one is going to be, this is a flip down. This is going to be a flip up on this extra piece here. So this part I am going to leave like this. This is going to be a little flip up on this piece. So I stick it here and that'll flip up. So this will have this piece. And then here I have a pocket because this was that shorter piece from the very first file folder. This is going to go, this is the back cover. So it had to cut, you know, cover the whole book. So that gave me an extra pocket here. So this will all fold in like that. Okay. Let me think here. Okay. So this piece is gonna be a second pocket. So again, another file folder. So this I had, this was just a, uh, a long file folder. Again, a little, one side of a file folder. So I measured this part again. I wanted it, this part to fit in this center piece. So see, it fits right in there. So then I had this left over on this side, so I made my crease here. So now, now I'm gonna have a double pocket on this side. So this is all gonna go together as a double pocket. I had, this came out. This one I want to have as a see-through pocket. So I needed another piece, so I just cut another piece of uh, file folder off. So I put this together. This is gonna be like an underwater scene see-through pocket, kind of like in our nature journal we did. And so I just cut the extra little, because I wanted it to be like standalone, so I just cut like a little notch out here, a little notch down there, and so this will fold in like that. This will be attached to this. So let's see if we can make sense of it all now, okay? So, and then somewhere in here, I'm gonna put an envelope. Okay, so. There's our spine, okay. So this is how it'll look. I lost something there. <laughs> okay, so this will be the front cover. Here's the back cover. That will have the magnet in it and attached to the book. This is gonna open like this. We're gonna put something here, like maybe a pocket or something. This is gonna all be attached. So we'll have a double pocket here. Um, this is going to, okay, hang on, 
I don't think I have this in right. Okay, so maybe I did have it in right. <sighs> Y'all, no. I'm confusing y'all. I know I am. I'm so sorry. I'm confusing myself right now. I had it all organized and I took out all the magnets or all the, the thing, all the clips. Okay. This is going to go here. Okay. We're getting it. We're getting it. Okay. <sighs> okay. Let me get move that. Here's the spine. Here's the cover. Got it. There's a the cover. It opens up. We'll have this flap. We'll have two pockets here. This will be the see-through pocket. This is another main page. This will flip over. This will flip down. This will be a, a top-loading pocket. Since I have a double piece here, this will be a top-loading pocket. And then here's our spine right here. And then this will be a flip up right there. This flips over. We'll figure out what to do on this page. I'm not quite sure yet. Then this is going to be three pockets. One, two, three, right here. This flips like this. This is going to open like this. This will be a side pocket right here. I've got to figure out what to do on this page. And that folds in like this. That closes like this. This is the back. And there is our book. Except I closed it wrong again. Uh, it'll all be make sense. There we go. It'll all make sense once we're, we got it all together. But that is how I put it together. That's how I initially put it together. Because this helps me get it pictured. Um, so for those of you who want... I'm just going to put this in here. For those of you who want to craft along, just cut up a bunch of your file folders into plain sheets like this. Like just cut it down the middle and then you have, you know, your sides. And then just start playing with it and folding it. The main thing you wanna do is just make sure this is going to fit in whatever book, you know, you have. You want your spine to be just a tad smaller, as you can see, just a tad shorter, you know. So that gives you room to expand. And then you can just start playing with things. Like, do you want to flip up, flip down? Do you want it to fold out like accordion style? Do you want pockets? If you so, you just stagger your pieces or put your pieces together. Like I have double pieces here, so that'll give me a pocket up here. That'll also reinforce my spine. You always want to have a double piece on your spine to reinforce your spine, unless you're going to put like uh, another piece there. But since I have um, the file folders, I'm just like, I'm gonna reinforce it that way. So that gives me a pocket there and extra pockets. And then you can just start playing with things and start folding them different ways. And then this gives me at least just the base. And then we can add to that. And then I'll be adding all the pockets and tuck spots and all that. So this gives me the base to work off of. So when I take my papers, um, I'm gonna like, you know, start playing with my papers on top of this. Also what I'm going to do, um, I'm not gonna sew anything together until I'm gonna keep all these separate and with the paper clips until I get them all decorated because it's easier to take like this piece to my sewing machine versus the whole book. And then if I wanna sew stuff or whatever, when I'm doing pockets and such, I love to sew because it just gives me that extra security that's gonna to stay together. If you've got really good glue, glue should do it as well. I just like to glue and sew. Um, uh, that's, just, that's just how I like to do pockets and such. Um, so what I'll also do is ink this up because I'm gonna leave this the same color I'm probably gonna ink it up either blues or browns or a mixture. I might even go in with my coffee stain and spray it because I might have some areas showing if I do a collage on a page or like a tuck spot. So I might ink this up, um, ink all the edges up, 
and then spray it with some coffee dye, coffee spray, and um, maybe some blues and stuff. I don't know. Most of it will be hidden. Um, I also did, like I said, some envelopes. I, I did the same thing as my paper. And I got some really cool looks with it. And then we'll decorate these up as well. Um, but this will go in here somewhere as well. I might, you know, put it as a flip, a flap, or maybe seal it and cut the top. I don't know. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I'll have some envelopes in my uh, signatures as well. So hopefully, <laughs> I know I confused y'all with that, y'all. Um, <laughs> I confused myself. But really all I do is just take my file folders and just start folding and playing and just trying to figure out the general gist of how I'm going to have the base. And then once you start really crafting with it and crafting and putting the pieces together, it really does come together. So we'll do that part together. And so maybe it'll make a little bit more sense as we go. But as of right now, this is just the base of what we have. And I like doing it with file folders or envelopes or paper or something just so I have an idea of where I'm going. And then I can always add more, change my mind as I go, but that gives me a base to work off of. <sighs> so there we go. We're under an hour, y'all. I hope, I mean, we were doing a hodgepodge of stuff, but little by little, the journal is coming together and I'm excited. And um, I would love to see what y'all come up with if you're crafting along with me. So have a very, very blessed day and I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.